So we're going to check up on one of our properties right now that we're building two ADUs. The area that the CDU is in and this property is in is probably in the worst part of Sacramento in terms of, I don't know, just the neighborhood just looks bad. However, we have a model, shit to gold. What we're waiting for right now is basically a four unit electric panel. This panel we ordered months ago, but there are supply chain issues where this panel is just not available in the United States. So we are just sitting on our hands and waiting for the panel. Without it, we cannot pass final inspection. Without passing final inspection, we cannot rent out the units. Therefore, the unit is essentially incomplete until we get this freaking electric panel. The floor panel that we got from my friend, how come we can't just order that piece from the manufacturer? Did you order the other panel that you talked about already? You got it? I got it. I just yeah, yeah, cool. One, one on the store, I just picked it up. Yeah, good. All right. That's, that's great. So we have that yeah, panel, I mean, right? We yeah. should order the piece so that oh, for the other, one. For for the the other, other one, one as well so that we have a com another okay. complete four panel okay yeah anytime you can do that yeah. let's right. let's get plaza over and known with and then let's get started with the other projects you, okay okay thank you bye Welcome everyone to a new episode of Leveraging Real Estate for Freedom. This is where we teach you how to build your own real estate empire. In this episode, we're taking you on an in-depth journey through one of our recently completed duplex projects. In this value add venture, we've successfully built not one, but two accessory dwelling units from the initial concept to the final exit during this very interesting market. We'll share our insights, strategies, and lessons learned so you may learn and apply our experiences to your investments or your future projects. So grab a seat, hit the like button, and let's dive in. We acquired this property back in July of 2021. Originally, this was a duplex. Unit one is a one bedroom, one bath. Unit two is a two bedroom, one bath. We partnered with one of our army veteran friend and investor on this project in order for him to apply his veteran status to obtain the loan with 0% down payment. During the purchase process, we negotiated for a good amount of seller credit, which resulted in almost zero money out of pocket for this purchase, even after all the fees. Absolutely insane play on the acquisition of this purchase. Let's talk about strategy and value add. I like multifamily because of their general ability to generate higher gross rental income compared to SFRs, because each multifamily property have multiple units bringing income owner is able to spread out their risk on like SFRs. If the tenant stops paying rent on an SFR, that property will instantly operate at a loss. In contrast, if one unit out of let's say a duplex or a fourplex stop paying rent, there will still be income from other units paying for majority of the property's expenses. For this specific project, we use the income from rents to pay for majority of our ongoing holding costs while we permit and complete our value add, which is our main strategy. Okay, it's the value add, not cash flow. We built two one bedroom, one bathroom accessory dwelling units, ADUs in a back open lot space as our main play for value add. Let's dive into the numbers. Purchase in July of 2021 for 285,000. No down payment and fees because all were covered by the VA loan and extensive seller credit that we negotiated. We sold in March of 2023 for $590,000. Holding period of 20 month, total holding cost of only $12,414. The value added construction cost is 235,000. We had to give $30,000 seller credit during the sale due to the market conditions. These are called seller concessions just to get this property off our books. And in the end, our profit was only 19,000. Let's take a moment here. This is by far the worst returns I have ever produced on our project. This is absolutely hysterical. This is what happens in real estate when things go wrong. You still make money, but just not that much. In this case, we made peanuts. So when something detrimental like this happens, we have to sit down and analyze exactly what happened. 
Let's break it down. Our losses stem mainly from one issue, and this is a requirement for a fourplex electric panel and a supply chain issue. During permitting, it was noted that we need to upgrade our electric panel to a four unit electric panel, and we couldn't keep the two unit panel for the existing duplex and add a new electric panel to service the two new ADUs. Nope they wanted a fourplex electric panel. We placed the order for the fourplex electric panel when we started construction, anticipating delivery during construction. However, we did not receive the panel as expected during construction, and once the two units were built, we couldn't obtain final inspection because the panel did not arrive and is not installed, and this extended the completion of project by upwards of eight months. The delivery date for the fourplex panel kept getting pushed back from three months to six months, and it was still pending. There were major supply chain issues and we couldn't get this panel for the life of us. Nowhere in the United States, no stores carried it. It was just not available. Finally, we were able to source a commercial grade fourplex panel and we paid 5K for the panel, 8,000 for the requirements to implement this new panel, which included trenching materials among other costs, $17,000 losses from rent because two units were sitting vacant for over eight months. You think about $1,200 per unit of rent per month times two units times seven months. Let's just give one month for leasing. $17,000. And then we had to give 20K seller credit because during the time of sale, the market is complete dog shit compared to eight months prior. We also have 40K loss of valuation, and that's the difference between the anticipated $630,000 sales price eight months prior and the actual sales price of $590,000. 110K of losses stemming from the fact that we couldn't get a fourplex panel. We had to push completion back eight months. After that eight months, interest rates are sky high. Buyer's dollars are worth less now. and have to give concessions to move the unit. If things went according to plan, our returns would have been 129,000 in a one year time frame and a 52% ROI. Give it that I could have kept this property and just cash flowed it. However, I made a decision to move it because one, the unit mix is not my favorite. Three out of the four units were one bedroom, one bath. Two, I can use the quarter million that I'm extracting to accelerate the value add and development processes of my existing holdings in order to realize more profit. This is what it looks like when many things go wrong but you still have a solid strategy in place. We still made a tiny sum of money, but to my standard, this is a decent loss. However, looking ahead into the future, I will make up this quote unquote loss by strategically deploying the quarter million in order to make more profit from it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We work hard to bring you value in each of our videos. Hopefully you learned something from this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and engage our content by liking and commenting. See you guys next time.